Well, hello, good people. Mark Holmes here. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. So um, we've got the Mike McCarthy press conference, and it's been I've been literally waiting here for about 30 minutes for that to get going. So let's go to it. We're going to watch this together live. Hey, Mike. David Moore, Dallas Morning News. Talk a little bit about just the, the impact of losing two players like Parsons and, and Lawrence and just how collectively you go about replacing players of that status. Well, I mean, it, it's definitely um, the unfortunate part of our game. Definitely too tough for, you know, what those two guys mean to our football team and especially being in the same position. So I think all that is the um, the obvious um, you know, part of the challenge, but you know, this is what this this game's all about. This is what this league's all about. You know, it, it takes it takes a lot of players to to win in this league. You know, week in and week out. So uh, it creates a great opportunity for others, and that's really our approach. You know, obviously we're going to have to make some roster adjustments. Uh, we're still kind of working through that. Um, it's part of the reason why I was running a little late here. Um, just you know, we had a personnel meeting. A collective. Everyone just has to be more disciplined. Oh, do yeah. what you're asked, and you. you Oh, you've answered your question. Your question, I think, or, or was that an opinion? So, uh, no, it was a question. No, it was a question. Uh, so, no, I, that's that's it. I mean, it's it, it's not like we're going to take one player and put them in and give them the exact same responsibility and you know in in reps you know that the Micah had or or with uh, D Law had. So uh, it's it's going to be a combination of things and you know and you let the you let the game plan bring out the light and um, because you know it's very it's very important you know when you have the forty nine players up. On you know on the game Sunday that everybody contributes. Clarence Hill, All City Dallas. Just for housekeeping, can you your understanding? What are their exact injuries? Is, is the D Law list Frank, and do you what is your timeline or timeline you've been told? Well, I, I know uh, I know D Law is it's you know whatever you want to call it. They, they've been calling the midfoot sprain. Some people use the list Frank. Obviously, there's different categories and so forth. The specifics of it. That's and frankly, I think that's more for him to answer. I know the second opinion is completed. Uh, I was told that prior to coming in here. So it's going to be it's going to be multiple weeks. Uh, so I think clearly, you know, we'll get but you know past the bye. We'll we'll see see where we are. What do you go on IR? We're still working through that. I'd say, like I said, I just came from a personnel meeting. And, and Parsons, it is just high. Um, he, you know, he's in a boot. You know, it's uh, it's it's it's, it's okay. an ankle sprain, and um, so we'll, we'll see how that goes. Uh, but yeah, he'll be he'll be he'll be challenged to make it this week. Uh, We're preparing to play without Micah. So, Mike Todd Archer with ESPN. Are there any parallels to draw when of the significance of these guys and who they are to losing Dak a couple of years ago to the thumb? And, Overcoming all that as well. Yeah, I, I think it's. I mean, I think it's obvious. I mean, when you, you got you got positions that that carry you know a little more responsibility on your football team. You know, pass rusher, corner, you know, uh, tackles and, and quarterbacks and, and those things uh, because it does adjust the way you you know have to have to game plan. Um, you know, that, that that's definitely the reality of it. But you know, once again, it's this is this is our game. It's, this is part of the challenge of, of our league and. Uh, you know, it's, it gives it gives others a great opportunity, and it's not just going to be one guy or two guys. We're going to have to have other guys step up. What, what have you liked what Nealon's done in the first month of this season? I really like when Marshawn's uh, just the way he's reacted to everything. You know, every every yeah, time we give him more responsibility, he just goes about it with, you know, with the, with the right attitude and, and great energy. You know, he's a bull and ball full of butcher knives type player. Uh, you know, we we cranked up his responsibility on special teams, and and he's done a good job. So I mean, for a young player that's, you know, it hasn't been. I mean, you, you look at our, our young offensive linemen; they're playing one position. They know clearly who they're playing against this this you know this week and so forth. Where Marshawn has he's had a little more, you know, uh, diverse to his uh, job responsibility, and I think he's done a hell of a job with it. John Mishota with The Athletic. Can you give us any update on Kalen Carson? And uh, Jerron Bland. I'm um, hoping Kaylin could, you know, practice Wednesday. That's, you know, we'll, we'll see how that goes. Um, but uh, he's making progress. And uh, same thing with Jerron. I, I know he's going to he's going to be out there That's with so Britt tomorrow, day. so I have a better feel for where he's at. Calvin Watkins, Dallas Morning News. How uh, Amani? How much of a challenge was that for him just to come in and start that second half? Oh, I thought it was huge. I mean, I, I just love the way he reacted, and I think it's really reflective of. 
the way he arrived here. I mean, he's just a super competitive young man. Um, just went in there and battled. Obviously, had the big play at the end of the game. Um, so uh, I, I, I love what he brings to the table. He's super competitive uh, in practice. You, you know, you, you see it particularly in the look teams it really, really challenges our guys. So uh, you know, no surprise to us. But you know, it's just like anything, you get that opportunity under the big lights, and he did a nice job. I was cooking. I've been able to keep Cook engaged with everything. You know, he's a veteran guy. Obviously, he wants to play and those kinds of things. The Elmo Cook? Yeah. 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 He's. Um, yeah, I mean, he's hard worker. Uh, I think he's a really good fit. I think, you know, clearly there's an adjustment, you know, part that, you know, that, that he needed to go through, we needed to go through on his arrival here. But, you know, he's, you know, he, he's chomping at the bit. There's no doubt about it. And, that, and that's who you want. It gives us great, healthy competition in the running back room. He, bring, he brings a lot to the table. So when is he going to be brought up? Nick Harris, Forward Star Telegram. And your time with Chauncey Golson, the responsibilities that he's had throughout his time here, uh, what, what kind of gives you confidence as far as him being able to take the next step? I think it's a little bit, you know, spinning off of Marshawn's, you know, answer. I think Chauncey's done a lot here. I mean, he's played a lot of different positions. You know, he's played the three technique all the way out to a wide nine. So, you know, and he's definitely played in now two different systems. So the technique and, and how he's been asked to play, you know, more even, more even techniques, more inside techniques. So, uh, and you know, and he's been able to use his length. And I like the way he's adjusted to some, you know, some of the things we're having him do more of in this defensive scheme. And you know, let's not forget what he does on special teams too. You know. He's he's always been that guy, you know. He's he's someone that you could put in there. It has wore a lot of hats since he's been here. You know, this this will be a great opportunity for him. He'll be him and Marshawn will probably be, you know, two guys that are gonna, that, that are going to handle a lot of the responsibility. Um, you know, with these injuries injuries have created. So um, I love what Chauncey's been giving us. It's on. Saad is the athletic. Mike, you, you've talked a lot about what September football is and, and all that entails as the calendar flips to October. What do you kind of look for in the second phase, the second month of the season uh, as you progress? I hope we learn from it. You know, because uh, we need to be better. Um, and I'm talking more in the areas of you know fundamentals, techniques, and so forth. But yes, I, I think you know you are who you are. Um, you know, after four games, you know we've done the deep analytical dives, and you know it's particularly spent a lot of time on the situationals because you know we, we we've had some out of balance games uh, in our first four. Um, but I think the biggest thing that you know stands out is the you know the critical penalties in situations. That's something that we we really got need to do a better job of. You know, we're always going to be working on our fundamentals and, and, and things like that and, and want to be better in you know, more areas than others. I mean, I, I think it's always part of the normal progression of, a, of, of an NFL season. So you're always working at some degrees or higher than others. And that clearly reflects where we are after four weeks. But we, we, we got to be better in the areas, in, in the penalty areas, because, you know, like we've had way too many third down penalties, way too many uh, red zone penalties and a couple two minute penalties. And, you know, that obviously affects scoring and obviously affects the opportunity for the offense to have the ball more and it obviously affects the defense being on the field longer. The, un the unscouted looks, how, how long does that go into the season before everything kind of becomes? Yeah, um, you know, I, I did not really looking into, you know, I don't think that's much as a as a focus right now because I think everybody is is now on tape and you at least have a, a direction of, you know, who people want to be and how their personnel is being distributed. And I think a big part of the unscouted looks is, you know, how are, how are teams distributing their personnel because, you know, personnel distribution also leads to, like, particularly on offense ball dis distribution and where, where do you think the ball is going how they get them there um, formation tendencies you know I think just like anything uh, history will tell you the, the more that you do you know whether it's formations uh, motions uh, the more the more tendencies you have so you got you got to stay on top of that more personnel groups that you use you know we use a lot of personnel groups, so we got, we got to be totally on top of what we're doing out of each and every one. Especially, you know, the situational football is kind of a filter that cuts a lot of these things and gives you gives you some clarity on uh, you know what you're what you're trying to get done, and it's no different for your opponent. Garrett, Garrett Fodell, CBS Sports. Mike, how much? I know you had the injuries to Lawrence and Parsons, but how much can the improvement shown in the run defense be carried over into a game against Pittsburgh? And 
a run heavy offense? Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's uh, you know, run defense is 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 about the eleven. You know, the one thing is, I thought we were clearly uh, cleaner in our fits. Um, you know, our block our block blocking destruction was was better. But we we have another level to go. We we got to get, you know, we got, we got to get the finish. The pursuit and finish needs to be cleaner. Um, I, I think we can get more opportunities on the ball. So that's what we're looking to build off of. You know, we understand clearly the job that uh, you know we did Thursday night against the Giants. But uh, you know, we, we we need to be better, and we will can, you know, we will be. You know, challenge there continually through throughout the season. We understand that, so uh, that's definitely a starting point for us. Kyle Gilman's DallasCowboys.com. Coach, uh, Mozzie Smith's starting to, to really play some, some good football over the, the last five quarters or so. How has his game evolved over the last few weeks and taken to the next play? Yeah, I, I think you're just seeing Mozzie get more confident and comfortable. Right? Those are two things that I see uh, from him each and every day. So, um, and, and not only, you know, I, I think, in, you know, the production that he's had, but just more the consistency, uh, you know, particularly the nose stunt that, you know, he hit two of those and, uh, nicely in the game and, and, and was productive with it. So, uh, so with that, it needs to come to consistency, but, you know, I, I definitely see a more confident um, Mozzie Smith. I'm not OC, never been OC. Uh, there's a lot of talk about pre-snap motion uh, okay. and where you guys rank in that. Can you just talk about why you're low in that category and that's an important part of your offense. Yeah, I see, seen the reports. You know, we got a great analytics department. Um, you know, I, I think I've probably seen all the ones you saw and and, uh, and, and didn't throw out the ones that are good because, you know, that's part of the equation too. But, uh, no, I, I think we're really kind of part of what I was talking about earlier. You know, you got to look at the situation. You know, particularly on offense. You know, because some, some of our formation. Um, you know, I was talking to John Park about this yesterday. You know, some of our formation tendencies. You know, you got to factor in. I think we've been almost three quarters of two minutes. So the, you know that those are screwed a little bit. Um, but yes, you know, as far as the motions, uh, how much motion we want to do. You know, uh, CDs utilization and motion. You also, I don't know. If, you know, one of the things the analytics also shows is, is just the, you know, the yardage that our receivers cover you know our, our guys are you know and that's a, probably a product of you know some of these two minute you know the extra two minute you know two minute offense that we've been in more than than the norm for for four games so yeah i've looked at all those things clearly aware you know the windows and you know so i've i've, I've seen the studies but also uh, i think our guys do a really good job of taking that data and then making sure all the filters are applied uh, so our 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 information is accurate and as brian and schottheimer and i, I will continue to visit on it you know, through today, and that's what tonight's for. Um, and then as we start putting that plan together tomorrow, so those things have all been identified. Uh, but I think, just like anything, you know, which which you do inside the why is 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 a big part of it. Um, so yeah, we, we're clearly aware of our numbers in in those areas. And as offense. Do you have to guard against trying to overcompensate for your defense, or is that what you have to do? No, I think it's uh, you know I think it's who you want to be, you know. And, and right now we're not we're not playing to the complimentary football that, that we played last year and really last two years. You know, I felt like the, the, the complimentary football really came into you know the formula we were starting to hit it in 22, and clearly was evident in 23. And one of the biggest statistics, and, and I made a point of it again today in a team meeting, is you know our our, our number of plays on the field. For our defense from 22 to 23 went down. Uh, I think it was nine plays. You know, um, or was it 50, 55? Um, yeah, we're, we're six six plays a game. So that's a full game. So when you look at your overall stats in a year, you know, if you're playing six plays less a game, that's a full game less for your defense on the field. So we're not there. We're back to 21 right now. So as far as what our numbers look for, so um, that's where you know, like he's you, know you talk about third down. It, it's it's always a two way street with me. You know, uh, when I see the defenses on the field, as long as they've been, I'm also very cognizant of what, what the production is on third down on the offense because our time of possession we're nowhere even close to where we were last year you know that's 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 a, a big negative for the first four games those are the things I spend time on and clearly why why are those numbers there and and that's what we're after because you know not only do we want to score as many points as we can but uh, we do not mind going a long way because there's a benefit to keeping our defense off the field. So much about time of possession is made on running the football. Time of possession is controlling the football, and uh, you know you can do that in the passing game too. So um, that's where we're not, 
you know, that's that's where after the first four weeks, our complimentary football formula needs to be better. So that's that's what we're focused on. Okay, thank you, Mike. Thank you. <laughs> there you have it. Maybe we end up getting a break and getting Carson back, as well as Deron Bland, and um, yeah. Sounds like he's trying to work it and think about this towards the long game. And um, hopefully, yeah. and it also it sounds like they believe in their own guys uh, more than anything else. And here's the reality of bringing somebody in off the street. You're not bringing somebody off the street and they're immediately going to be able to plug in and end up playing. It just doesn't work that way. Unless they are somebody who's played in your system before. But since Mike Zimmer has just gotten here, um, unless they've been on, you know, on a team and working out, it's going to take a couple of weeks before you're really ready to have somebody in there. Um, you know, we, we hear about Dalvin Cook is chomping at the bit. And he's been here for well over a month. And we still have him on the sidelines. And Zeke Elliott getting about five, six carries a game. So, you know, unfortunately, we's all we got. We's all we got. So we'll go from there and see what's what and who's who. All right, good people. As always, I appreciate y'all. And I will see you tonight, 9 o'clock Eastern. Peace.